Hey y'all, what's up? Big Willie here, and welcome back to another episode of our FTB Skies Expert Let's Play. I'm stoked, you guys. Uh, it's a lot of work right here. This mid-game is... It's tedious, like we've talked about. There is just so much to do that it's kind of hard to pick a direction, figure out where to go. But we're going to get started today by taking a look at the in-game quest progression because that gives us a break from moving everything around and let's see what we can mark off. So without further ado, let's get into it. So coming over to the in-game quest, we need a thousand blaze rods. Now in the last one, we kind of got prepared for some of this because we, well, not the last one, the one before last, we started work on our hostile neural networks, but we ran out of stuff we needed to make our import buses to import the completed predictions. And so these have all kind of stopped because, well, we don't have enough predictions in there. So let's get that wrapped up to start things off today. And we need to get our blaze data model over here because we need those thousand blaze rods and we can either trade the piglins for them or we can put the blaze predictions in and just get it from here, which will be the easier choice because this is much more passive and we don't get the extra junk loot that we don't really need. So now that we have this in here, it should be able to start crafting and exporting prediction matrices. There we go. The last thing we're going to need is for all of these that we have here, I'm going to go ahead and grab us out or craft us up some import buses, which I think I actually look at that. I have five in my inventory. So we're going to take these import buses and toss them on the bottom here. And then we just need to get some channels down here for these. We need some green cable. Where did I put the green cable? There it is. Okay. Grab that. And then, oh God, Z, Z does that, by the way, in case you don't know, if you want to like swap your hot bars and it accidentally comes up, it's the letter Z. Um, uh oh, six of eight. We're going to exceed our channels if we tie it in over here. I think I mentioned that in the last one. So we're going to need to tie it in on the other end down here, right here into this dense cable. And so that will keep us at six of eight on the top. And then it will also get us to five of eight down here on the bottom. Also give us a way to tie into our loot fabricator. So these import buses ought to start pulling the loot side stuff into our storage. Let's see, is it gonna pull those? Yes, it is, there we go. All right, so that's gonna start clearing those out for us as these run. Now we've got the blaze in there, so that gets our thousand blaze rod stuff kind of started working. Now, do we have any blaze predictions? We do have a couple. This is not gonna get us what we need, but what it will allow me to do is to show you guys how I set up these loot fabricators. So they can't handle it too many different mob processes or they just back up and never clear the predictions out of your inventory. So I have found that about three different mobs drops in one of these is about all it will really handle before it just backs up too much and you end up not getting through and getting the stuff you need. But since we've only got three right now that are running constantly, the Merid, the Enderman, and the Blaze, we're going to set this one up for those three. Now we're going to need one more. We're going to need another import bus. Let's just go ahead and tell it to make us another 10 or so of these. Hopefully we have enough for that. And then we're going to set up an export bus. Now this export bus, just like the others, we're going to toss a capacity card on. Oh God, not on the front. Learn to click. There we go, export bus, capacity card. We're gonna tell it first and foremost, it can export a blaze prediction. And now when you put a prediction in for the first time, just like before, you have to tell it the drop you want. There we go. Now as it gets blaze predictions, it's going to turn them into blaze rods for us, 16 a pop. And so if we toss those into our storage, there you go. You can see it export it. It's gonna automatically craft them. And then we have that. Now. The other two that we're making, Merid. So for the Merid predictions, we'll put those in. And then when we see one pop in, we want it to make Aphrodescence. And then for the other one, the Enderman one, I want that one to make Ender Pearls, I believe. Let's see, Ender prediction, these. All right, 
Let's see what our choices are once we get those in here. Well, it'll be after the afrit. So we'll check on that in a minute and we will pick the drops we want it to make for our uh, Enderman predictions. I think there's probably a couple stacks of these Merid in storage. Let's see. Uh, no, actually. So once it works through those, we should be good to go. Let's grab out those import buses from our storage here. Uh, they're still making, but that's fine. I will take the ones we have. Now, I don't remember whether this will, how these blocks work. So I don't know if it's only the bottom that we can export from, but we're going to find out. So if we put that there, do you pull in the blaze rods? Yes, you do. Cool. So we, there you have it. We have our export bus feeding our drops into here, our import bus pulling the loot back into our storage and tossing it into drawers and whatnot if we have them. That is going to be great. That might even, over the course of this episode, get us enough blaze rods. Do we have any alternative recipes for blaze rods that we can utilize? We can use these, but, but we only had nine of the predictions to craft those, so that was futile. Metal press. Hmm, interesting. So if we did have a metal press, we could do it in there. Uh, we could make... I thought we had blazing bees, blazing comb. Oh, we have to make it into the comb blocks and then process it. Okay. Well, I mean, we can do that. Didn't we have blazing comb coming in or did we never get any of it? Blazing. Oh, the blazing comb's not in here. Interesting. All right. So yeah, that is, that's going to have to work on this. Let's, uh, we'll check on that in a second. Now, next on the list here is nether stars. So we were getting our nether stars from crafting them rather than killing the wither. And we had not made a wither prediction, I don't think. Or do we have a wither prediction? Wither. No, we don't. Uh, wither data model. So the only way we're going to get that is killing the wither a bunch, I think. Yep. So we're going to have to kill the wither a bunch to get the wither data model. But there were other ways to make that nether star. And we did make some of them. Nether star. Um, here. So we're missing wither skelly skulls. But we should have enough of it with seven wither skelly skulls we can make there which is not enough for our nether stars, but it gets us some more, gets us four more. So we either need wither, we need a wither skeleton data model or a nether, a, uh, a wither data model for the nether stars. How many nether stars do we have now? Where are the nether stars we have now? I think they're up here in one of these. Yep, 12. So that puts us at 16. How many did we need for the quest? We need a stack. So we need to either get a wither uh, data model going or a wither skeleton data model going so that we can get them skulls or so that we can get the nether stars straight from the wither data model. Uh, withered bee, where do those come from? Skeletal bee, where does it come from? Regular B with a skeleton skull. Ooh, is that the way we need to go? Because then if we do that, we get withered comb, right? Uses uh, advanced beehive, withered comb, and it drops wither skull chips. Okay, so we definitely can do those. We have the, the wither, uh, the roses right there, skeleton... We've got five, that's a full hive right there. So that's a hive worth. We turn it into a skeleton bee and then we turn it into a wither bee. Let's go do that and yeah. So give me a minute to go convert some bees and I will be right back. All right, y'all ran over to the other base and I grabbed like nine bees. Um, we're not gonna set them up over there as you guys know and from a few episodes ago, we got a, we got a major bee problem. But what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and convert these here and I'm going to just set up a temporary hive out in the like, in case you guys, had, I don't know if I talked about it, 
I was like trying to figure out block palettes and whatnot for my build, which I want to get back to doing some decorating on this too, but we're going to set them up out there. As you can see, I've got us a beehive out there, but I want to convert them in here where they don't stand a chance to fly off. And then we'll just go out there and get it all set up. So we will shift right click to put down the bee. It should want to come hang with me because I've got a dandelion. We'll turn it skeletal, wither rose, and then if we take our sturdy bee cage, we should be able to pick it back up now that we have a withered bee. We're going to rinse and repeat this four more times to get us a full hive of the withered bees. There we go. So that gets us a full hive's worth of withered bees. Now, let's grab some glass bottles. How does the storage not know how to make these yet? So we need you to be able to make glass bottles. Uh, there we go. And you already know how to make glass. So that is awesome. And then we toss you in here. And then now, can you just, for starters, can you make me a thousand? Heck yeah. Oh, uh, you're going to see that drawer sucking them all out for the beehives on the other side. That's okay. We just need a stack. So we'll wait on that to get to a full stack and then we will snatch them. All right. So we got ourselves a full stack. Let's go put these withered bees in this hive. So this is just temporary. I am, I think I'm going to just move the apiary that I built, but we're going to need a bigger one. I mean, if they're all in hives where they're not flying around, what's the point of the apiary? I don't know. I thought it looks cool. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to get all them moved over here so that everything we can tie it all in on drawers and whatnot. But for now, we're just going to do it temporary. You guys know, like, you know, you know me, if I can put it off till tomorrow, why do it today? So there we go with a rose in there. I already made a product productivity upgrade in a simulator. So they'll stay in here. And then we're just going to pop the withered bees in. And there we go. Full hive full of wither bees, withered bees. And then they have their wither rose right there. I don't think it makes a difference if there's like three of them in here, but maybe they can, I don't know, maybe they can pollinate on it. Doesn't really matter. So that is going to get us these bees going. These are nocturnal. That means these guys only work at night. Is that correct? Cool. So now is the perfect time for them to work away. Hopefully we will see some of these wither skelly skulls chips come in for us as the episode progresses. Maybe we should make a couple speed upgrades. Um, productive bees speed upgrade. It wants clocks. That's one. That's two. Okay. So this gives us two speed upgrades and some productivity upgrades. There we go. Look at that. 16 withered comb already. Heck yeah. Let's let those process and then we'll come back at the end and uh, take out as many combs as we can find and see where we get to on our numbers. Speaking of numbers, I bet this is backed up on Enderman things now. Yep, so we either get ender crystals or ender pearls. Uh, control E. Don't we have pearls being made ender? Yeah, we have 51,000 pearls. I don't know that we need the ender predictions running, actually. Because we've got all the pearls in the world we could want. Let's pick a different mob to put in there. And let's not process the uh, enderman ones for now. Let's grab these combs and we will process them while we're over there. And we'll see where we get to. How many combs are we up to? 32. Heck yeah. Okay. Uh, to the old base. All right. And then let's toss these combs in here to get processed with the bees. Where are my bees? All right, so the combs can go. Cool. 
Cool. There's some chips coming in now. All right. And then I guess I don't know how many of those we're going to get if we'll have enough for our wither, but we shall see. I will demonstrate and then I will get it done. Oh my gosh. It's not here. It's there. So let's hope that this goes as planned, right? Because the plan is going to be to right click this guy where he sits. And since he's trapped, I should be able to just put you in here and then we should. Nope. It doesn't let us attack him while he's in there. Is that, is that what's happening here? So I cannot attack a wither trapped in a stasis field. No. All right. Well, we're going to have to find a better way to kill the wither five times then. That should be interesting, especially in Skyblock. I guess we can encase him in obsidian, but he could still in theory break out. Hmm. Let me think on that one. I don't, I don't quite have an answer for getting six easy kills on a wither. Oh, we could take him to, we could take him to another planet and summon him there. We could summon him in like Mars or something underground because there is an overworld there and we could do the traditional dig the big long tunnel, summon him in a tiny room, make him come to us and kill him. So yeah, that's probably what we'll do for that. So that means we'll just have to make sure that before we go on that adventure, that we have enough Wither Skeleton Skulls for six Wither Summons. So we will need 18 Skulls to be able to get our data model up and running. Hopefully we will get there before the end of today's episode. And that leaves us one last thing to figure out for this one here, the Crying Obsidian. So it looks like we can convert them with bees. We can find them in dungeon chests. Or we can synthesize them with antimatter, which I don't think we'll be doing. Or it can be bartered from Piglin's trades, which I think is what we were doing to get them. Let's go see if there's a bunch in this chest with the Piglin up here. If I can remember where my teleport block is. There we go. Huh, 35 more and a bunch of junk. Ooh, we do have more chips though. So those are skulls right there. And then where are we at on Crying Obsidian? 172 and we needed 128, right? Right. Heck yeah. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. All right. So there's that. Let's grab our nether stars out. Um, those we can go ahead and turn in the 16 we have. Okay. And then blaze rods, a thousand. And look at that. Just from the time the episode's been going, we have our thousand blaze rods. You gotta love it when a plan comes together. Now we just need enough withers and we will be in great shape. 960, so I just need one more stack. That gets our thousand blaze rods done. And now we are literally just waiting on enough wither skelly skulls to either craft or summon a wither. Um, it takes two skulls per craft. And if we need uh, 48 more, that would mean we need 96 skulls if we just want to direct craft them. Or we need uh, six times three is 18 skulls to make the wither data model, which is probably the smarter option because you guys saw how fast we went from 300 blaze rods to well over a thousand. Um, I mean, that was, that was in a hurry. So yeah, it, the, the smarter option is going to be to make the 18 skulls. So let's see wither skelly skulls. So we have those fragments. Oh, and those other ones that are coming in from the bees, I need to get in a drawer or we will not be able to get them into our storage. And that bee drawer is going to back up. So there they are. So we need to get these wither skull chips into our drawer network. Where do I have the others? I have the others in there. Um, do I have anything that's got, there we go. Something with an upgrade already in it in a slot there we go so there are our wither skull chips that gives room for those to go in once we tie it all in 
And now we should be able to take those and make another skull. It does kind of suck that it still takes nine of them. So we're up to five. All right, so let's uh, see what else we can do. Maybe we can start on some of this next piece. We're gonna need crystallized amber. What is it gonna take us to get there? I feel like we've made this before. So fire charges, honey, or lava, so we, and fire coral. Fire coral we get from waterlogged sieving dirt, which we do not have being produced. We get it from waterlogged sieving dirt. It only happens on the string mesh though? What? Y'all seeing that? So we won't get it on higher tier meshes? Yeah, look at that. There is no recipe. So we have to have a string mesh on a waterlogged sifter with dirt. So water sifter. Oh, look at that one left. Cool. And we'll grab a couple stacks of this. And then we need, we got chests, probably got pipes and all that that we need. We need a bucket of water. So bucket of water. Cool. Yep. Uh-huh. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to need to bring that resource gen over here. So I guess it's not a bad idea to start thinking about where we're going to put that. It'll have to be out here in Automation Station. Probably just another P2P tunnel. We'll bring it in here. Yeah, we'll just bring it right along here. We'll do another little gap over with a block so we don't have any cobble. We'll go dirt just for now to signify. And then let's come like right in here somewhere and we'll put down hmm how are we gonna do this let's go with a pipe uh oh ultimate logistical transporter that works so we'll go here and then let's go like that this can signify our sifter line we will eventually end up with here and then we should in theory be able to just put a sifter waterlog it We'll swap out for our configurator real quick. Push pull. So that'll pull out of it. Um, we will want some kind of buffer chest for this to go into. Cool, a diamond chest works. Uh, we can actually put the diamond chest on this side. And then you are gonna need an export bus with a whatever eventually, but for today's episode, Let's just do a good old fashioned wooden hopper and a chest because we just kind of want to get this done in a hurry and we can tie this in with just replacing those two with an export bus. But for now, we'll put this here and then all this needs is a string mesh. Yep, and that'll let it take the dirt. Now we just need rotational force. Do I have an electric motor still? I don't. Um, well, shoot. Well, then we can just go with the diesel generator. All right, so how about right here? Cool. How are we on channels out here? Six of eight, six of eight, six of eight. You are 29 out of 32. You're getting pretty close. I'm thinking about just stealing some channels to get diesel in here real quick. Um, yeah, so let's just steal a channel off the purple network. Uh, we'll just come straight over. And I should be able to do an export bus into here. And then the export bus needs to export force infused diesel device missing channel oh okay yeah I can't do it there there we go yeah because there's already eight on this little leg that I tried to tie it into cool and that gets this running okie dokie we're getting somewhere And we just need a cog. 
And another cog. Not like that. Here we go. And then to tie all this in, we would just need to put an import bus on it, and it should, in theory, import all back in. So now all we're waiting on is to get the rare 5% chance drop. We need to pile up a bunch of the fire coral. This may not be enough dirt to get us all the ones we need, so we may have to toss some more in there. If we wanted this set up permanently, which I will go over probably in the next episode, because I think we're running out of time for today. But in the next one, we'll probably bring over all of our sifter setups and just make a resource generation line. This will be where things are getting made. Uh, it looks like we may need to bump this row over a couple, though, because of the interfaces here on the front. So we'll take note of that and shift things over as we need to. Uh, I know today's episode was kind of all over the place, but we did finally tie in our hostile neural networks here. As you can see, making good use of the channels that we brought out here on a P2P. We figured out what we're going to need. There we go. There's one. So we need 64 of those, right? Uh, if we go look. Super cooling. Yep, it's a one-to-one. -one, so, And we need 64 crystallized amber for the next quest. So we're going to need 64 fire coral, which now we have coming in. And if we wanted to tie this in, we could, in theory, you know, let's just do it so that in case it needs to run. So if we do this, and then we're going to need to steal a channel here, and we don't want those to touch. So if we bring this over and up, I have totally missed where I needed to be going. We should be able to put an export bus. And tell it to export dirt. All right, and then we should, in theory, also be able to just snag an import bus onto this chest, but we're not going to do that right now because we, quite frankly, don't have this stuff in drawers, and I don't want to stuff up our storage. So at least this way, though, it'll ensure that this keeps running, uh, and we don't run out of dirt in here until we get the 64 fire coral we need. So... That is going to take care of that. And then what was the other stuff we got done? Oh, yeah, we got the wither bees going. We've talked about the plan for our future bees and moving them over to this island. And all we're really waiting on now are enough wither skeleton skull chips so that we can make our 18 skulls uh, to be good to go. So I will probably work on getting some network out over into here and get ready for a B episode in between this one and the next one. And uh, if you guys don't already know, I stream once a week on Fridays with a friend of mine, Crypto Tito, and we just, we play Minecraft. We're two friends that play Minecraft together and we stream it. We usually only stream for like right at an hour just to keep it short, sweet, you know, fun. Sometimes we go over, sometimes, you know, not so much, but that tends to be the focus of my Friday evenings. So if you guys aren't doing anything at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, because that's the soonest I can get there most weeks, that is when we stream. Come join us. It's here on YouTube every Friday, and we are playing a new mod pack that we just started called Uncharted Expeditions. Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. I hope you have found it entertaining and been able to learn something, and we will see you guys in the next one. I know it's lightning and all, and I'm sort of scared, but why are you still here?